This is Ruth O'Reilly, and I'm interviewing Elvin Golson at his home in Onaway on April the 22nd, 1999. Now, we should be off and running. Yeah, it is. Okay. Now i got to be careful what I say. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. We're just going to relax and just, you know, we're not going to be formal about it or anything no, like yeah. that. It's just going to be just Your conversation. Voice. Your voice will be on there, too. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. Even hers, if she... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, we just wanted to know uh, well, when some of the, uh, the general questions that they had us, well, it's been listed here for us to ask. Uh, why did your parents or you move to Potlatch or the area? Why did you come here? Well, my uncle wanted to get married, but his wife didn't want to live with his folks because my uncle had to stay there with him and take care of him. That was Aunt Helen and Grandma and Grandpa. Yeah, and uh, so he wrote Dad and wanted Dad to come out west. So uh, we went broke in Missouri. The chinch bugs got our corn one year. Who did? The chinch bugs. Oh. Oh, man, they just come in there by the millions from uh, Kansas wheat fields. They can fly. Oh, gosh. And some of the farmers would drag a pole along the edge of their cornfields and kill the chinch bug, but that didn't do any good. There were so many of them. And then one year it rained, we couldn't get harvested. The grain grew that high on the shock. We lost all our grain, and we had a terrific crop. Well, being that my uncle wanted Dad and us to come out west, so we sold out and come west. That was in 1926, we come west. Mm -hmm. We moved to Missouri in 1920. We lived there six years. Now, how, what year do you know what year this was? Yeah, I was, I was born in 1907, and I was 13 when we moved to Missouri. I was in the seventh grade down there. And, uh, well, when I graduated, why, well, uh, I wasn't too interested in high school. I waited a year, and then everybody wanted me to come and go to high school, so I decided to go. Well, I was one year behind one of my friends. We still write to each other. Is that right? Yeah. And... Uh, so uh, I went there for about four months, part time, and I just give it up because I, this boy he had too many girls friends. <laughs> he wanted to associate with after after school, and I couldn't get home. See, I was riding with him to school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of good times together. We well, there was a little lake there five miles away called Lyle, Lyle Lake, and every Sunday, I, when the weather was warm, we'd head for the lake. <laughs> One time it all oh, got an electric storm. We didn't know what to do. We didn't dare stay in the water. But we got out and got dressed and come home. <laughs> yeah. We had another place there on, uh, well, they called it Cedar Grove. It had a big hole and a big rock in the middle of that. And we'd go swimming down there at night after it. Yeah, and one night there, why, well, here come a water box. And boy, did we clear out of there in a hurry. Oh, bad. Oh, bad. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I guess all them boys that I went swimming with are gone, except the one that I still write to. Mm. Yeah. He's the same age as you are? Yeah. I don't know. There's a few months difference in him. But he wasn't in grade school. He went right to high school, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what are your earliest memories of Potlatch? Well, I worked for Ray Hansen in my first job. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. And my first job was sorting spuds. Well, I wasn't sorting them. Ray and Joe Tuft was sorting them. and uh, But I had to shovel them into their bin so that it, they could sort it out. Yeah. And then on some days, why Ray and I, we'd load up a bunch of sacks and haul them to Potlatch. To yeah. what? Potlatch to the store, market? yeah. Yeah, we haul them there. And then we got a wet spell, and I, he didn't have no work for me. So I come down to Polish, and I come down there eight times before I got a job. At the mill? At the box factory. Oh, at the box factory. Yeah. This mill was a box factory before it was a lumber mill? No, it had the box factory there. Oh, it was separate from, I mean... It well, was the, box, the box factory was a big plant there. There was about 60 people living there. Lots of Japs in there, too. Now, where was that in adjacent to the lumber mill? It was right beside it. Right beside it. You know where the loading dock was? Well, it was, it was just off the loading dock from, from the planer. 
I'll be darned. I haven't heard about that yet. Huh. I think the mill was there before it. Oh, the mill was there. My uncle, he helped build that mill. What was his name? Joe, Uncle Joe. Joe goes Yeah. He was, he had a farm back in Iowa, and uh, his wife died, so he sold out. Him and his boy come to Portland, and they bought a place out at Milwaukee, Oregon. And uh, finally, while Uncle Joe died, and of course, Dean, and that was his son, he stayed there for a while, and he got married, and it wasn't long he died. So I don't know what happened to his wife, or he had two stepdaughters. Yeah, but how come, what has he got to do with potlatch? Well, Uncle Joe was, uh, was Uncle Lewis. Did you know Uncle Lewis? He married, uh, this here bag lady. Maybe we should have put that Oh, up. really? I yeah. didn't know that. Now, they had four children. Lewis Gozen married that, what was her name? Luella. 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 What in that was her last name? Yeah. Anyway, we we knew her as the bag lady. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that was later in life. When yeah, she got yeah. To uh, what is the first event you attended in Potlatch that made a big impression on you? The first event. Oh, well, I... I... played uh, basketball, baseball. I played baseball with the boys from Potlatch. You remember they had a big diamond down there at the mill? Did you play with Bernie O'Reilly? I didn't play with any of them. I played with Clem. You played with Clem? Yeah. That was later years. Yeah, that was later. Yeah. I know I wasn't married then. I See, I come here in 26, and Irene and I got married in 28. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Bernie was a catcher for that team for oh, a was long, he? long time. Yeah. Oh. Was Dutch pitching when you played with Clement? No, I can't remember. I think Dutch was pitching yeah. quite a bit then, too. Yeah. My brother was pitching, too, for a while. Yeah. Anyway, that's the first big event you can remember that you and you were involved Well, with. <laughs> and that, the winter that we had that big flood, that was something. Now tell us about that. Well, Ray Hansen's dance hall was practically floating, but he had it cabled down, and one day there, I went down there to see it, and he wanted someone to go with him. He had made a little raft, so I said, I'll go with you. And so we had to poke He didn't have no motor on it. We just had pipe poles, and we poked our way out there and stepped from the raft on top of the roof. That's how deep the water was. And so Ray, he opened up a spot there on the top there, and we looked in, and candy bars was floating all over there. And about six inches of the piano was sticking above water. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't remember what year that flood was? It was about 1932. It was during the Depression. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't working at the mill then. The box factory was the first one to shut down. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Then you didn't go to school out here. No, I didn't. No. Yeah. Lee Gale wanted me to come and go to school. And uh, I thought, well, here I am, 19 years old. I don't want to start in now. So I decided I'd just work for Paul. Yeah, yeah. And she's got some questions here about schooling. It said, did you like school? You've already answered that. And what did you have for books? Did books? You, yeah. Did you have regular school books? No, uh, school? Not, not with me here from Missouri. No, but when you went to school in Missouri, did you have books there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got used books. People f from the year before would give me some of their old yeah, books. Yeah, yeah. And we used to hand down books. Yeah, yeah that's what they were. Uh, what was their method of discipline in school? Did you get spanked? No, no, no. None of us got spanked, <laughs> except in grade school. When I was going to school in Iowa there, one kid there, he just couldn't behave. Finally, the teacher come down, he was tapping his ruler on the table. She come down and whacked him over the head and broke his ruler. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. He was quite a kid. <laughs> they used to hit your knuckles with rulers, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you came out here, did you live in the in the town of Potlatch or did you live on a farm? I there? lived on a farm with my my folks. Where was that located? Out uh, west of Potlatch. You know where uh, 
go to Wallader lived yeah. across the highway. Okay. Now yeah. I remember the Gosland place too. Yeah, that was where we lived. And then when Irene and I got married, well, we bought that little place where Mrs. Kusler lived. Oh, really? Yeah, Irene and I lived there for about six years. Huh. When Rosemary was old enough to go to school, we moved to Potlatch. Yeah. Lived on, uh, I think it was 830 Cedar. Yeah, that, that's be. when you moved into town. Yes, yeah. yeah. That was after the Depression. And, uh, when you were a child, what was your greatest fear? I wasn't afraid of anything. You weren't? No. Even even the teacher there in Iowa, he said something about it. He said, what are you scared of? I said, I'm not scared of anything. And I wasn't. That's good. <laughs> uh, when you worked for Potlatch Lumber, how did it treat your, how did it treat its workers? Well, they treated the workers all right. But I asked the boss there one day, Johnny Olson. Did you know him? He was the boss of the box factory, and I asked him for a raise because the jib, guys were jumping and making six dollars, and I was only making four, and I was working just as hard as they were. That night, he gave me my time. Uh oh. <laughs> and three days later, why? I was back in the box factory, but I was on the night shift, tailing the matcher. You know what the matcher is? No. That's where you glue lumber together. Oh. Yeah. And uh, so I was working on that there, and finally, why Johnny met me about the first of September, and he says, "How would you like to come back on days?" And I said, "What are you doing?" He said, well, "Give me your old job back." No, I said, "I don't want it." I said, "Your time machine broke down." He says, they're going to fix it this weekend. And I I said, well, if I come back, I want to help her. He had to go see old Peterson, and Peterson decided, yeah, they'd give me a helper. Who was Peterson? That was a general manager. What was his first name? I don't know. Charlie Peterson, was it? I don't know. I can't remember his first name. But anyway, they decided they'd give me a helper. So I come back on a Monday morning on the day shift again, the same old job he got me from. <laughs> At what wage? I uh, fifty cents an hour, but I had a helper. See, fifty, yeah. fifty cents an hour. Fifty cents an hour. I started there at forty-two and a half in the box factory. We were loading cars, and run the corrugator and the nailer. I didn't have tail rip saw or cutoff saw. That was the dangerous part. Were you aware of any unrest among the workers because of company policies? Well, in a way, <laughs> the boss there in the sawmill wanted to cat a guy, and uh, the boss that was in the sawmill, he didn't want to cat him. Well, he said, if you don't cat him, you'll have to go back to your old job. So he did. He come back, went back to grading in the planer, and I don't know who got the boss's job then. Hmm. Yeah. Who was that boss? Remember? Uh, t Tommy Yeoman. Oh, okay. He's the one that wanted uh, Kaiser to can this guy. I don't know who the guy was. Was it Tommy Kaiser? Mm -hmm. No, Tom he wanted Tommy Kaiser to can the guy. Okay. I yeah. don't know who the guy he wanted Tommy to can. Yeah. Tommy wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember anything about the logging camps? No, I don't. I never worked in the logging camps. Although I have logged one winter during the Depression. The snow was five feet deep. Man, I'll tell you, it was deep. We put in a thousand feet. It took us all winter to put in a thousand feet. Oh, boy. Yeah, and I shoveled enough snow that winter to last me the rest of my life. That's right. Because yeah. the sawyers had went in and cut all their timber, and then it was up to my father-in-law and I to skid it out. And if we made one load a day, that's probably... Well, sometimes it made two. That's two, one, about two and three thousand a load. Yeah. Mm. What uh, leisure time activities were available to you? Well, we had the uh, smoke period. You know, we had ten minutes off every two hours. But when you weren't working, what did you do for fun? Oh, I don't know. I, I was living out on the place, you know, and I, I had a big garden. And... Uh, you didn't go to dances? Oh, yeah. Irene and I did after. We went down to Riverside. We never went down to Shrake or Craig's. Never did go down there, although I did. 
<laughs> and Helen, Helen, yeah. Do and you Helen remember? Did. did you remember Helen Hardesty? Yeah. She was the first girlfriend I had out here. Is that right? Yeah. My sister went with Harold Hardesty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I hear uh, Helen is. I don't know. Is she still alive? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, how did the war f affect the community? Well, I don't know. It was a good thing Potlatch was here because nearly everybody around here worked for Potlatch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. I would get them up a farm. That's the way with me when I bought that 40 acres on Hatter Creek. I, I wanted a place with a creek to it, and I got it. Yeah. And then I had a chance to buy another place, another 40 acres, and a brand new house on it. For nine hundred dollars, so I bought it. So I had eighty acres up there. <laughs> well, Irene didn't like living on the farm, so she got her job down there at the gas station. Oh, the old signal gas station. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. She was running that, and after a couple of years there, she wanted to get rid of me. <laughs> uh, do you remember the women working in the mill during the war? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember a few of them. I know now, Eva Tobin was there. Yeah, Elsa Hicks and and uh, what's that other girl that worked with her in the pit in the pits? You know, two girls in a pit. There, I gave uh, the historical society a picture of those women oh, in the you? mill. Yeah, uh -huh, that I had kept and showed Audrey Kate and Eva Tobin. Yeah, and then that Kmeyer girl. Yeah, she's the one that got a toe cut off, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah. But there, you could probably name all of those women if you just had a... Oh, my sis worked in there a long time, Evelyn. Yeah. She was a cleanup woman. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, can you describe some of the conditions during the Depression? <laughs> I'll tell you, it was really rough for me, I'll tell you. My boy was born in 32, and she was... I didn't have any money. I just got my washing machine paid for one box shop shut down and I don't, I don't think I had over a hundred dollars in the bank and Irene and I really skimped and of course Dean was born and he couldn't take his mother's milk so he lost he weighed less when he was six weeks old than when he was born mm -hmm. so we had to take him to the doctor and the doctor suggested buying some dextromaltis for him start feeding him that he snapped right out of it, started in growing, and it was sure nice after that. Uh, how did you buy your groceries, and, and uh, how did you pay your bills, and that sort of thing? <laughs> we just had to skip. I had all the spuds I needed, and all the cabbage I needed, and I had a few chickens, and we had our own eggs, but I didn't have no well. Did you have a cow? I did after a while, yeah, later on. After the Depression, my father-in-law gave me a cow for it the winter that I put in up there helping him log. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you get your chicken feed? I can't remember anyway. I... Well, you usually fed him wheat, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It didn't rain, but he had to buy it. We had to get it from somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I can remember a lot of things during the war, boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can, too. Well, it mostly hearsay. Yeah, oh, really? I can remember. Oh, yeah, back a second floor. Oh, yeah. I remember, who was that used to run the, the buttons up there in the middle Audrey of Audrey Cater. Was it? Yeah. At the mill? Yeah. yeah. That was her. I remember her. Yeah. When I first came to Potlatch, there was a man... Well, I came here when Mother had cancer, you know, when I, I gave up my job in Spokane. I'd been in Washington, D.C., and I went to Spokane, and then I came down here when Mom got cancer. Yeah. And I went to work in the post office in her place. Yeah. Guy Van Busker hired yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I went across the street to the confectionery to get some lunch, and this fellow walked up behind me, and he said, uh, how do you like punching buttons? I said, I don't punch any buttons. Yes, you do. You're down at the mill. You just got the job punching buttons. I said, no, I'm sorry, but I don't punch buttons. <laughs> and he says, and I said, I don't know. And I said, I work in the post office. He says, well, who are you? And I told him. He says, I thought you were Audrey Stewart. 
That's right. Her name was Audrey Stewart. Was mm -hmm. yeah. uh, she's got here. What areas of the community were taboo to women, to children, or to the working class? What areas of the community were taboo? You couldn't go there. Oh, what about taverns? Were they taboo? We, we had, had six. Children could never go in taverns, could they? I don't think so. There were six beer parlors in Ottawa when I come here. Oh, my. Yeah. You remember the dance hall that used to be here? In Ottawa? Yeah. Yeah, I danced in that upper and part. Did A.C. Smith play in that? Did he have a band? I don't know who played. He was a mail carrier, A.C. Smith. I can't remember that. I See, my mail come from Flues. Oh. Yeah, out, out there. Well, in Polish, when I was living in Polish, I got with me out at the post office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I lived out there on the farm. You mean out there where Devella lives now? Yeah. It was from on the Palouse route? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. Wasn't that one reason why you uh, moved to Potlatch is because of uh, Rosemary going to school? Yeah, that's why we moved, because Rosemary had to go to school. Oh, yeah. And she had, had to go to yeah. school. Palouse. You were in the Potlatch district then? Did they make you send your children to Palouse or to Potlatch? Well, I, when I moved to Potlatch then I was in the, otherwise I'd have been in the what they call the Lamb School District. Okay. You know where that's yeah. at? Yeah. yeah. See, Rosemary would have had to went there and I thought that's no place for her walking that far. Yeah. 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 So we moved to Potlatch, hmm. sold the cow, and when, during the Depression I even sold my car because I didn't have any money to buy Dexter Maldos. And mm -hmm. I gave $700 for the car. But you hung on to your piano. I, give that, I give that to Evelyn, to Rosemary. I know, but that was, oh well. That you, still had, you still had it available to sell if you'd had to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of these items, it's pretty obvious, but uh, it says, what other events were heralded by the mail whistle other than normal shift changes? On a lady for fires, they yeah. blew a whistle. Yeah. I blew that whistle several times. I know. In the middle of the night, Jim would have to get up and get dressed and run down to that mill. Yeah. I'd help him find this and find that. <laughs> uh, I think when the war was over, they blew that whistle for a long, long time. You remember when that when the war was over? Yeah. They got on that whistle, and I thought they never were going to get off of it. They rang the Ch Catholic Church bell. Yeah. Rang and rang and rang and rang. Everybody running around, tears in their eyes, so dog on happy. And <laughs> I don't even know where I was. <laughs> and it says here, with other major fires in Potlatch other than the Mercantile Fire, well, when that Presbyterian Church burned. Yes. And the log cabin. That didn't burn, did it? It what? didn't burn down, but they had a heck of a fire in there. Oh, I didn't know that. I had been up to Princeton Harbor someplace and coming home, and they had the hose laying across the highway with a, a, a tube before each side of the hose so you wouldn't flatten the hose, see? And I wondered, what the heck that's going And here I noticed the smoke coming out of the, out of the log in, cabin. That was in the log cabin? Yeah, it was inside the log cabin. You don't know what year that was, do you? No, I couldn't and say Stan exactly. Could tell you all about that. Who? Stan. Yeah, oh, I, I imagine. Yeah. Well, that's in history on the log cabin. He could tell you. Yeah. That's the question she. When the church burnt down, I, I don't know what in the world I was coming home from Harvard or something. I don't know. Maybe I'd been fishing, or I don't know. Stanley and I used to fish all the time. I know. I know. And uh, here, by glory, the church is burning, and the shingles is flying in the air. So are the pages out of the hymn books. Yeah, I imagine. And I went to my house, and there I had a fire in my backyard. Oh, boy, yeah. Yeah. Them shingles are coming through down there. Yeah, yeah. So I had to stick around there and keep the, kill the fires around my place. Yeah. yeah. I stood outside of my house with the hose in my hand, outside the kids' bedroom window. They were asleep, and I stood there watching those <laughs> darn pages and shingles flying through the air, and I was ready to doused the shingles, you know, and the neighbors' houses and everything. We all had wood shingles. And holy moly, if those yeah. had ever caught fire, we'd have all gone, you know. Yeah, yeah that was pretty scary. You got an itchy spot there, haven't you seen it? I had a mosquito bite there, yeah. Oh, you yeah. scratch it out. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm a scratcher. I'm a digger. Uh, I was going to ask you about some of the buildings. What do you remember about the big red barn? 
Oh, I remember that big red barn, yeah. I, what in the world did I was, oh, one time they called me out. I was working in the planer. The box shop had shut down. And they called me to drive a horse out on the green chain. Because, you know, I'd lived on a farm. And so I went out there and I drove a horse on the green chain. I've had so many jobs down there. <laughs> yeah. But what do you remember about the big red barn? Well, the big red barn, they had lots of hay in there. And I think they tore that down during the Depression. No, the big red barn's still standing down there. So that's the big old gray building now. Oh, you mean, you're talking about the one down on the mill plant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm talking about, uh, what do they call this? The, the, old, the old gymnasium. Oh, yeah, I was in there when they used to have boxing matches. Yeah, and dances. Yeah, and dances, too. You Lots bet. of dances. Yeah. I'll have that bleeding pretty soon. <laughs> uh, okay, go ahead about the big red barn down there in the flat. A lot of people don't remember that big yeah. red barn. Well, they had a ball diamond down there. Yeah. And they yeah. had bleachers, too. Yeah. That's when I went down there to... They had that in 54. Five. And they had... Uh, that was before I was married. 19... I know, but they still had it in 54, because I went down there to a ball game in 54. Uh, I don't think you had the bleachers then. They had a, a football field down there, too, because I remember my brother playing football, and Jim O'Reilly was playing for Potlatch. Yeah. And Jim Black, or caused my brother to have a nosebleed, and I said, boy, I'm going to kill that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that guy, I guess, and I got him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they can't remember the, the Japanese gardens and everything down there. Can you remember those Japanese gardens? Yeah, but that was right, right down on the highway. Well, they had Post a lot street. of them down here, too. Down here? Down in the flat. Oh. Down by that big red barn. There used to be a lot of gardens there. Yeah, I I guess there was, yeah. too. Yeah. And the Japanese houses in town and the old bakery. Yeah. I got a lot of food out of that old bakery. Yeah. That's Mrs. Felton. the Moose Hall was. Huh? In the Moose Hall. Used to be, yeah. yeah, yeah. The original Moose Hall was up over the bank, and then they moved it up. Yeah, yeah. And they moved it up to the bakery. Yeah. Yeah. At Mercantile, what do you remember about the Mercantile? Well, I'll tell you. The one guy there that was in the grocery department, he liked to go hunting. And he he asked me one time if I knew where there was any chinks, and I told him, and and he went hunting, and when he Pulled his gun out of his car, he shot himself. Oh, boy. Yeah. There, was that his name? I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah. Accidental. I remember Leo Gormson. Oh, yeah. He used to work in the grocery store there. Yeah. Uh, they had every department in the world in that store. It was a full city right there in that one building. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one that has a, a shop in Pullman now? Which one? Know. I don't know. One of them from Polish got a big, I forget what kind of a shop it is. How'd you lose these fingers? I didn't know they were gone. I'd done that down at Ed Barnes's mill. Well, you had one off before that. Yeah, I had the, the three of them i done down at Potlatch. How'd you do that? I was, they wanted to save the chips when you started running the rebut, rebut machine, and they wanted to save the chips for kindling. And uh, this time I... They let the kindlings pile up underneath the rebut machine. And so it was getting so full, I got in there to shove it down farther, and I nipped, just nipped the end of my fingers, and saw caught my little glove, whang, just that quick, I lost the end of them. Mm. Yeah. But this time, here and now, I done that at Ed Barnes. There he used to be a mill down there across the highway from the service station. I was worried. Service. Which service station? Down along the highway. The Peck Station? Yeah. yeah. You know that metal building down below the road? Yeah. That's where Ed Barnes's mill was at. Their saw filer quit, and uh, so he wanted to know if I could put out some saws. I said, well, I can put them out, but I, said, I don't know whether I can get them done or not. So I went down there, and I started putting out band saws for him. And uh, so then he said, can you change knives to the planer? I said, yeah, I can change knives to the planer. So changed knives, and I was joining them in. And I just got him jointed in, and I turned too quick, and I touched the side head, and off went three fingers. Oh, that yeah. one come up, was out. Mm. Yeah. You know, uh, Cecil head. Oliver, mm -hmm. he lost his fingers the same way, except he done it down at Potlatch. Mm. Yeah. 
Margaret called me and told me that Al was in the hospital and he'd lost some fingers, but he was, he was all right, but he'd lost some fingers. I didn't know what was coming up next. <laughs> Boy, I would only imagine. Well, would you get a total disability then, or? Oh, I was off for about two weeks or more. Only two weeks? Work. And they was wanting me to come back, and, and I was drawing compensation, you know. And I didn't go back. And boy, if I bumped them fingers, man, how they would hurt. Well, I bet. I bet. See, he was working, working for Potlatch at the same time he was working down there at Barnes. He wasn't supposed to be working two jobs. They, Potlatch didn't like that. Well, uh, right. Dean was going to school in Omaha, and I was trying to send him $100 a month so that he wouldn't have to go hungry. And that's one reason why I was working down there, pick up an extra $100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Louis Spaghetti come down, and he saw me down there, but he didn't say a word. <laughs> Louis and I went fishing one time, way up on Hatter Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. He was, that's when he got fired, you remember? Yeah. And then he yeah. was working on that, yeah. that building that's, is that, that's not the same building, is it? What? Uh, that eating house there, that's the why? Louis, Louis Spaghetti. Where he had uh, that was a tavern. Uh, what was his name? Um, Brian. Devella's dad had that that uh, Long Jack building. Yeah. That see that was built after Mom and Dad built the house there at the junction in 1943. Yeah. And that Ryan was built there about that time because Dad sold him the land for it. Oh. And uh, what was his name? Devella Kusler's dad. Oh. Woods. Woods, yeah. Yeah. Jim Woods, wasn't it? Jim Woods. Yeah. <clears throat> they had it first. They built it. Yeah. Yeah. They had it first. And I don't know the sequence of that. I'd have to get that from Devella, who had it and who had it and who had it. I know that Clement and Newell Lavoy had it at one time. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah. One time when the big flood was there, I was driving by, and the guy was standing in the doorway, and and he was standing in water that much, that much inside the building. And he hollered out to me, he said, hey, come on in and have a beer. <laughs> Free beer today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when Dad, see, that water had never gotten into Dad's house till this last flood. Yeah. That little house there now that is, uh, well, Marvin Bain owns it now. It was a veterinary. Oh. When, when uh, Harry Vaughn had it, it was a veterinary. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Baines bought it. But uh, it never got water into the house till that last flood two or three years ago. Huh. But Dad and I walked out of there when I stayed with Dad before Jim got home. Dad and I walked out of there and I strapped my purse around my neck and we each had a stick and we waded out through there and boy, the current was so strong that we could hardly walk through that yeah. to get up to the highway. Yeah. And it still didn't get into the house. Hmm. Now they built that highway up higher. Yeah. And it does. Yeah. So anyway, when they, when your dad built that house down there, I had seen high water there before, and I thought, boy, he's sure building it in a bad place. Yeah, I don't know why mom wanted to build it there, but uh, oh, she was the one that wanted to build it there. Huh? <coughs> yeah, yeah, but she, I guess they got the land, you know, for a good price, and uh, they had that Munn built a Jack Munn. Jack Bill Munn. No, it was Jack Munn, I think, that built oh, that house. Yeah. And boy, that was the coldest house I ever lived in my life. No insulation. They had this uh, fiber board on the wall, yeah. and that was supposed to be insulation. Oh. Boy, that was the coldest place in the world. But I that was the first time my mother had running water and electricity. Is that right? She moved in from the farm out there by Bob Lindsay's. Oh, yeah. And she had that running water. I think they moved in there, and it was built in 41. I think that was the year they moved in. In 1943, she died. You know, when I first met Stanley, I don't know where I met him first, but anyway, he liked to hunt. And so, by God, he'd come to my place, and we'd go hunting. It wasn't long until here come Goldie, too. I can remember you and Irene when I was a little kid. Yeah. I, you know, I can remember I was young enough, I was still around home, and I can remember you coming out hunting yeah. and, and going hunting with Uncle Stanley. Did you yeah. know Bert Ankeny? Well, yeah, because he lived across the highway from us. Yeah. 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 Bert, I saw Bessie down there at the rest home. Did you? Yeah. She's still alive? 
I don't know. My brother was in the rest home, and, and she was in there, too. Don't be darned. But don't she didn't me. remember me. Yeah. She didn't. No. And uh, one time when Bert and her and her couple of kids come to visit Irene and I, one one of the kids wanted to get in Rosemary's doll bed. Oh, <laughs> my. The doll bed is about like that. But that little girl wanted, wanted to go to bed. Oh, my. <laughs> that was so comical. You're cute, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um... What do you remember about Onaway and this place? Well, Onaway used to be the biggest mud hole down here you ever seen. And they'd put rock in there, rock in there. You could get stuck up here. Right up here on, main, on the main road? No, it was right down below here. There must have been a spring or something. Yeah. I think there's still a spring that runs down through there. There might be. But after they got enough rock in it and, and put the pavement on, and... Uh, of course, they, this pavement hasn't been on there too long. No, It'll just loose no, gravel. I know, I know. But the town of Onaway, what do you remember about it? Well, at one time it had six beer parlors, and you go up there, and you could just go from one to the other. Marge Miller. Marge Miller run one of them. Yeah. And there was, uh, oh, I guess, the spot. What in the heck was their name? What, their dad got through in the pen. Oh, I don't know. Petrigola. You remember Petrigola? I remember the kids. I remember, yeah. Uh, yeah. Old Joe Petrigola and I was walking out of their plane there one night, and he says, Boy, I'm sure going to get old Ike Hibbard for putting my dad in the pen. Oh, really? What was he putting the pen for? For bootlegging. Oh, really? <laughs> you remember the bootlegging days, do you? Yeah. Do you? Oh, yeah. Tell us about the bootlegging days. Well, I didn't, I wasn't drinking then. No, but you knew about the people that were bootlegging or the well, people that were making yeah. stills. You remember Tudor Smith? No. You don't remember him? No. That's, uh... Irene Stan, wasn't it? Tudor Smith Irene Stan? No, no. Tudor Smith was Mariona's. Uh, some relation to Mariona. Mark. I don't know. You ask Mariona if she knows Tudor Smith. Okay. One time, Ben Gilder and his wife and I really and I had went to Moscow to a show, and we was coming home, and there was a guy standing on the road there, and of course I knew the man, I know he's from Palach, and so I stopped, and he said, I don't know if he could ride home with us. Well, there was already four of us in there and a couple of kids, I think. And yeah, well, he said, just wait a minute. Here come another guy out of the draw. They had taken their whiskey and took it up the draw and, and hit it, I think, because he was a bootlegger. I know he was a bootlegger. And so I hauled both of them home. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted Glenn to go with me and go up, go up that draw. That was after 10, 11 o'clock at night. Oh, Glenn didn't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't bother their whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Well, what else do you remember about On the Way? You remember the, the dance hall here, you said, and, and yeah. the girl <laughs> The dance hall that I remember was up above the store. Yeah, right. Yeah. The store? Yeah, well, they had Guernsey, they had a two stores, didn't it? Oh. Did they have two stores? I remember one. I think they had two. You remember the old barber? The, he was a barber and sold gas and, and uh, what the heck? Well, I borrowed some money off of him one time. I forget I thought you told me that dance hall was above that tavern that, well, the location where the tavern is now. No. But that tavern no. burned down, of course. That tavern is uh, where I went. It was right there besides Mariona, where Mariona lives now. Yeah, yeah. And that's where the yeah. tavern, big barn was. But they had the dance floor upstairs. Yeah, the dance hall was upstairs. Well, yeah. The grocery Joe store was on the other side. Was... Joe McKinney was a bouncer. Oh, he was? Yeah. Oh, be darned. And he got in a fight with a guy, and he got all crippled up, you know, and he said he, he zigged when he should have zagged. <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds hurt. like Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you remember the Roy Guernsey's grocery store? He used to deliver to everybody in town, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Nancy Swenson worked for him. Oh, did she? Yeah. Worked for years, don't yeah. you remember? No, I don't. Uh, I used don't. to go there and buy a sausage, three pounds for a quarter. 
Can you imagine? Three pounds of sausage for a quart. Uh, an old Roy Guernsey. What was the, the boy's name? Was his name Roy, too? Denny? Denny Guernsey, yeah. When he got married, why, I wasn't in on the Chabri, but they put him in a in a crate and hauled him out in the country and only had his underwear on. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> They used to chivalry around here. You oh, remember chivalry? Yeah, they used dynamite. They used to have chivalry. They did everything. They took kettles and banged on them, and they, <laughs> oh, and you'd go. Then you'd finally get them up, out of bed. Yeah. And they were supposed to have cigars for the men and candies oh, for yeah. the women. Yeah. I remember that. I yeah. went on a few chivalries. When Irene and I got married, why, we couldn't get a house in town, so we stayed with my dad and mother, and. Uh, Boy, when they should read us, they must have had a, an awful gob of dynamite because, man, that house shook. <laughs> no, I can remember Vic Morris. You remember Vic Morris? Oh, yes. He and a whole bunch of guys coming in the house. There wasn't room for all of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about this place? Here? What's, what's the history of this house and this place? I'll get you something. You just get me out of here. Well, we bought this from Adair. From which A there? Aunt right. Iney. We called right. her Aunt Iney. Old Bud had already died. Oh. And Virgil yeah. was here with his mother. No, not Virgil. What was his name? Well, Virgil, there was a Virgil A there. Yeah, he's the one that had the airplane, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 But what a, but then, what a, George A there. George A there. Well, that, that was his son. Yeah. Uh, George and Aunt Iney was living here together. And she wanted to sell, so we found out that that Ruby wanted to get out of town. So we bought this place. And this place was a wreck, I'll tell you. But I raised the house up and raised it up 14 inches. I wish now I'd have went up another eight. Because mm -hmm. then I could crawl out, and now I can't crawl under it. Well, you don't need to now. No, I'm too old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't need to now. But uh, the history of this place... Well, I, uh, oh, what in the heck was that uh, guy's name? He lived up here in Onaway. He was, he lived here at one time. There's so many people that's lived here. My. I don't know who owned it first. Can you keep this I... in your house, huh? Ruby? Mercy, this should not be in the house. It should be in the bank vault. My goodness. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. This goes way, way back. Town side of Honorway in Lake Charles County. Huh. Lake Charles County was formerly a part of Nez. State of Polly Empson, E M P S O N. And then it went to uh, Starner and then Pledger. I remember Pledger. Well, there used to be a Pledger out here on the farm. Yeah. And then town side of Onaway, uh, Elmira Newman, George Greiner. Huh. My, oh my. Petition for letters of administration filed December 29, 1897. Recorded book two, records of probate court, page 63, the matter of the estate of Polly Empson, deceased. Huh. We never did bring that up to date. No, but this is quite a history. Now this. Yeah, it is. I wonder. I I would never want to part with it. No, I should say not. But I'm wondering if it would be uh, possible to uh, copy copy pages out of this. I imagine if I could. I don't know. We'd have to ask. Would you want anyone to do that? 
not for myself. Because no, I mean for yeah. the historical. Oh. Now that's something. Watch out, Daddy, on this. You shouldn't have this in your house. This should be in a bank vault safe. Do you want to get up on the of that? Can you make it? Hmm? Oh, I was going to have you get me a drink of ice water. Well, me. Eighteen hundred ninety-nine at Princeton. Would you uh, object to having copies made of this for the historical society? No, not as long as they don't damage it. Well, they wouldn't damage it. No, that thing is really, to me, that is something very precious. Well, you better believe it. Eighteen ninety-nine. I should say so. It's such a good record of this. Did place. you know Elmer Pledger? I know. I knew of him. My dad knew him. Yeah. Yeah. No, I knew of him. I knew the name. Orville Riley lived here at one time. Orville Riley lived in this house? Yes, sir. He did. I found that when I remodeled, I had to take out a window out in the west bedroom, and there was an old letter in there. Oh, it was brown, and I tried to save it. I don't know whether I still have it or not. I think I have it. This is really something. But it shouldn't be here in your house. It should be in a vault. Have you got a safe that's fireproof? We got a safety deposit box. No, but I mean here in the house. No. Oh, no. You just shouldn't have this in the house. I, dear just have, I just have it in an old 1907 bookcase. <laughs> you should have this in a, in a, in a vault. Very definitely. This is historical. This is valuable. Historically. Yeah, I imagine. You bet. Yeah. But you were telling me... You know, the thing of it is, at our age, it's finding somebody to leave that stuff to. Because oh, our kids aren't interested in that. Leave it to the historical society. Give it to them. But they have fires over there all the time and everything burns up. You see, every once in a while... I don't there. know what they're going to do about their, their records and stuff. How they're whether they're going to put it on uh, microfilm or not. I don't know. But this, I know this is...